Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Makes. Welcome to this bottle art project. I haven't made one of these in a while. This time it's aquatic themed. I have used some real seashells and a toy octopus and some scraps of lace to make this happen. I had a collection of seashells from lots of different beaches, this uh, laser cut miniature door and the toy octopus and I fished out this gin bottle from the recycling bin. I like that it has a flat surface to work with. So I've uh, removed one of the labels, the other one was being really stubborn but I knew it was gonna get covered anyway so I didn't struggle with it too much. I also got rid of that um, color from the cap, I didn't need that. So I'm just going through my collection of seashells and I want to find a really good one for the cap and I end up going with a snail shell. I'm also going to bring in some string to just wrap around the cap. Um, I want to mask that aluminium feel and give it some interesting texture. And I think string or yarn always helps with these sort of things. So I'm just sort of tightly wrapping two layers of it and just using a little bit of hot glue um, to fix it in place. Of course, this is prone to sliding down just the way it is, but it will be addressed later. I'm also going to be using hot glue for the seashells as well, but um, no worries, everything will be completely embedded later. Hot glue is not that stable or archival, so it's a good um, temporary way to stick things down um, and to catch quickly. And glass being such a sleek surface, um, I do like to use hot glue. So I'm using this uh, little door and door frame that's um, from like tabletop miniature scale stuff and the toy octopus. Um, I'm also going to be using some scrap lace to add a little bit more texture and interest but I'm not really going for like a clean um, look. I, I'm just really looking to add that extra texture and then I decided to add another piece of lace just so that the element is repeated somewhere else. And now I'm sort of going through my stash and I'm actually picking out the not prettiest seashells, maybe the blandest looking ones, maybe the more damaged ones, because these are going to get painted and I don't want to waste my prettiest ones. I'm also adding uh, just some fake pearls because, you know, it's kind of on brand um, with the whole aquatic theme. This time I'm keeping all the dimensional elements just on one side of the bottle, just for practical reasons of this being easier to store and display if it has a flatter back. I need a tile grout PVA and water mixture and I'm going to be using this to fill in the gaps between the objects and to fully embed them and sort of make everything one cohesive piece and I've also applied some of it um, on that string and that's going to keep it permanently in place. I'm just using a little plastic spatula to get into all the nooks and crannies and as I said I'm like fully embedding all of the elements. Um, some of them end up more submerged than others, but my point is to 
break up the plain and sleek surface of the glass bottle and instead bring texture. Yes, I am obsessed with texture. I like my art to be touchable. So I'm even accentuating it by tapping on the surface, uh, sort of creating these peaks that are going to settle down into a softer um, shapes as the tire grout settles. And with the combination of lace, uh, there's a little bit of variety. Kind of a last minute thought, I remembered I had a little baggie of dried starfish. And they are really, really cute. But unfortunately, most of them are damaged or broken. And almost all of them have the tips of their um, little arms broken off. Probably my fault for not storing them properly, but I thought this was the perfect project to actually use them uh, because embedding them into the tile grout actually hides some of the damage, but still they will add a lot of charm and cuteness to my final product. And yes, I did place some of the starfish on the back because they're quite flat. I left the bottle to dry overnight and the next day it's time for painting. Of course I'm going to base coat everything with a dark brown acrylic paint. Well it's not that brown, it's kind of like a chocolatey brown and this is like a nice creamy um, acrylic paint that has great coverage in one layer. Um, so that's why I'm using it, because it goes over the seashells like butter, as well as over the lace and the tile grout and, and even the plastic of the octopus. Um, I'm actually dipping my brush uh, periodically into a little bit of water, especially when I'm go going over smaller details like the seashells because I don't want to clog up the shape with the thick acrylic paint. I just want uh, even coverage. Um, as I said, texture is my purpose, so I don't want to lose any of the details. When that has fully dried, it's time for proper painting. I am going to be using a variety of paints, um, but I, hopefully I manage to um, have a harmonious effect. I'm painting the little door and door frame um, with lots of detail and care so that I'm like painting each stone in the arch individually and I'm also going to be painting the metal elements of the door, like the hinges and the handle, with a nice bronze metallic paint. I think details like this are worth the effort. Um, they make it look a lot more finished, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to be painting the octopus a very dark green. Octopus in real life can have a variety of colors, so basically anything goes. But for my vision, there were going to be a lot of blues and greens and yellows, um, but somehow still with a warm undertone because of that brown base coat. Um, I've just realized that first of all I should have painted the background so I switched over to a larger fluffy brush and I'm basically just over brushing the entire surface. This paint dries really quickly especially with such a light handed application so I can immediately go in with an even lighter blue. And by the time I'm done with that the green on the octopus has dried so I can go in with a dark green to add all the shadows. 
Then I'm turning my attention to the seashells themselves. And as I said, I'm going to be using a variety of greens, blues, and yellows. And I'm sort of uh, forming visual triangles with the same colors. And the colors are going to get lots of layers as I go. I'm painting the starfish in quite a simplistic way, first base coating them into nice sand brown and later I will return with some highlighting and dry brushing to them. As you can see, I'm mixing some of the colors on the seashells, trying to create some gradients and playing with colors. Um, I'm actually curious, um, is this part boring? Is the painting process too long? Should I cut out segments like this or shorten them down? Or do you actually enjoy watching the painting process itself? Um, do let me know in the comments. I would really like to get some feedback on this aspect of my videos. I like watching people paint, but I know it's uh, not everyone's favorite. So as you have seen me, I have started using more yellows and I've even brought in some really cool greys. I mostly painted the pearls, the quote-unquote pearls with the grey. <laughs> At some point I'm sometimes switching over to my fingers instead of paint brushes. Um, it's just how I roll and at this point I decided that a little bit of color variation on the background is probably going to lift the project a little bit more and I also added some highlights on the octopus. Going back with some deeper blues as some of them got a bit too washed out and I believe I have added a little bit more dark green here and there as well. Now to really bring out that texture, I'm going to be making a wash with a very dark brown and a yellow shellac ink. And this is one of my favorite parts where everything becomes alive with saturation and color. Um, this also seals in my paint as the shellac ink dries somewhat shiny and it's archival. I really like this effect and I really like watching the application of the wash just flowing into those cracks and shapes and mm, it's just so satisfying to do and to watch and of course my cap gets the same treatment and I really like the way it looks on that string on the body of the cap. After many hours of drying time I'm returning to my project with a little bit of gold metallic paint. Of course, this is to taste. This is my project. I like putting gold on things, so I am doing what makes me happy. I do this last step after the wash so that um, I have that contrast with the deep shadows and the highlights. And uh, here we are. We're done. This project was actually quite quick and fun. I think it took me two days total um, and most of it was due to a drying time overnight with that tile crowd. But I'm really happy with the result. It's really to my taste. I like old looking things and pff, I don't know, the pirate treasure vibe is just something that really makes me happy and I also like that some of the seashells in my collection uh, you know the ugly duckling ones um, get to have a new life 
If you like projects like this, please do check out my channel. I have a playlist with a bottle art projects and I'm going to leave that in the description if you'd like to check it out. I publish new videos every week. If you'd like to see what I make next, please consider subscribing to me. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye!